We need somebody maybe to protect these guys, keep an eye on them, make sure that they're in good shape, make sure no one comes around and bothers them. So let's <laughs> welcome one of the greats as far as that is concerned, and a Toronto uh, Windsor native just from outside Windsor, penalty leader in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Ty Domi. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing? Good. <laughs> he doesn't look I that tough. I don't need to sit down. I don't need to sit down. I don't need to sit down, right? No, no, no. <laughs> how you guys doing? How are you? Good. So never mind you, how's your son doing? <laughs> Good. Uh, you know, he's uh, in Phoenix now for a couple weeks, and he's getting comfortable. I think he's got a suntan already, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see him uh, develop and bring the gold back to, to Canada and win in this building. It was pretty special. I had a lot of fun with, uh, I had a lot of fun with Max. I did a, we had a, a charity game up in Stouffville called Hockey Night in Stouffville, and I had to coach Max, and he came down and made a marvelous move on the defenseman, a little toe drag. Then he beat the goaltender and roofed it off the roof of the net. I see, got back to the bench. I said, Max, you look just like your dad. The problem was he'd have had the puck chopped up into about 17 pieces and tried to score with the largest piece, which is probably what would have happened. But Max is a wonderful young man. You should be very, very proud, and I know that you, you are. We've Thank got some you. questions for all, any of them. And uh, who are we up to? Sam? Yep. Thanks, Joe. Ty, we're going to jump right in from Dominic. A question for you. Yeah. So back in the day, there were a lot of tough players. Who is the toughest Leaf you've ever played against? Sorry. That you played with. You win. Well, I don't really like to talk about fighting much because I did it the most, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I took care of this guy and my teammates. That's why I had the most. <laughs> but the toughest guy, unfortunately, he's not here anymore with us, but he's a special guy, uh, Bob Probert. Boria, you could have used Ty uh, back when you first came over here because the Broad Street Bullies had about 17 guys named Ty Domi playing for them at the same time. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. That was a different era as well. Well, yeah, it was a little rougher, I say. You know, I think the, you know, the penalties was no, you know, today the penalties are so much stiffer and they have uh, videos and everything to, to show afterwards if you can get suspended. But at that time, they could do anything, and you get maximum two minutes. So uh, that was a little different. And it was, uh, but it was fun playing, too, though. But it was, like you said, playing the, the, the Philadelphia, they were completely crazy, you know. It could happen to anything. And also, there was, you know, brawls. There was brawls. I don't know, sometimes we had, you know, four or five brawls, you know, in, in one period. And, and, you know, there was no penalty. You know, it well, was Boria, crazy. Well, actually was a tough guy, and uh, Matt's was tough too mentally and but the one thing when they played they were the best players and they're always the biggest targets but they were the smartest and that's why they never got hit too often and they were they're were fearless I don't know if you guys know but Swedes are fearless and uh, I had an opportunity to grow up watching Borea and guys really tried to kill him you know and uh, he didn't have much protection and I watched that as a kid and I watched Tiger Williams do that job as much as he could uh, as a kid, but watching Matt's, everybody tried to go at him too all the time, and every, you know, and that was the chemistry and the bond that we had for so long. And I think that part of the game, I think, is is kind of gone now. So I think the most important thing is for guys to play in the game with no red line because you know it's so fast and guys are flying. Guys are actually getting smoked with with uh, you know concussions now uh, just by reckless hits and that was the thing everybody says fighting is out of the game well that's the only thing that I kind of you know as a guy that what I did I made guys accountable and when guys took advantage of my teammates and when guys came to the Arcana Center they knew if they hit Matt Sundin or <laughs> so all you so all you people who actually Respect toughness. These two guys are actually tough. 
just because they didn't do what I did. They were really tough. And Boria in his era, you know, and, and funny story about Boria, my first training camp when I was 18 years old, um, Boria was still with the Leafs, actually. And uh, I was getting skated really hard by John Brophy at center ice at, as an 18-year-old. And uh, he was really trying to bury me. And Boria came over and told bro, bro, take it easy on the kid. Would you take it easy on the kid? But my other story about Boria was he actually took me to my first bar in the NHL. <laughs> I did. It, it, yes. <laughs> in a stretch, in a stretch limo with Russ Courtnell. <laughs> <laughs> you you were 26 that years ago. Else, you weren't <laughs> the first person to ever have that happen to them, Ty. <laughs> Trust me on that. Lauren, I think you've got a question somewhere. Where are you? Hey, Joe. I'm yep. standing here with Matthew from Whitby. He doesn't have a question, but he has a message for Sundin. Uh, hi, Matt. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. Um, the Leafs, but you just inspired me to start playing hockey and everything and follow the Leafs, and I just want to say thanks for that. Um, I'd say you're, pro you're the greatest Leaf, in my opinion, classiest player to ever play. I, I just want to say thanks. You're a big part of my childhood. Thank you very much. That's nice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Sam? All right, Joe. Brad has a question here for Borea Salming. Hi, Borea. I, I grew up watching uh, the Leafs, obviously, and you playing and uh, there's one game in particular I remember is when you got the skate across the face. And I remember holding my breath as a child and uh, my parents at the time too. How did you, did you feel that that was going to be a career ending? And uh, just quickly to Matt Sundin, Ty Domi, thanks for the years. Uh, I have my granddaughter here. She's watching hockey because of you all as well. So thank you. Gloria, that, that was a scary night in Detroit when you were uh, caught. Take us through it uh, and, and how serious at first did you think it was? And uh, you weren't out for a long time, but no. it, was, it was frightening. Well, I mean, it was scary. I didn't even know how big it was because I, I, uh, I was actually blocking a shot in front of the net and somebody kicked somebody else or, or tripped the other guy and he stepped on my face. And, uh, I knew there was a cut, but you could feel it when you know the, the feeling. But uh, and then I could feel the blood, so I just sort of went off the ice and uh, came in there. And uh, I didn't actually know how big it was until I got to the hospital and uh, when when they had the operation. And uh, they were uh, putting stitches for uh, three hours, and uh, there was over 300 stitches, were inside and outside. So uh, that was pretty bad cut. That was a frightening night. We got two more questions. Lauren, where are you? Yep, over here. Oh, young lady. <laughs> I'm standing here with Armita from Thornhill, and she has a question for Sundin. I've been your fan since I was like two, and I want to know um, when will we be seeing you as a coach? <laughs> oh, uh, that's a yeah. good, that's a good question. Go. Let's fire that one out. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I don't think I'm ever, I'm ever going to be a coach at the at the highest level, but. I'll be a coach for my kids, you know, I have a daughter now, she's three years old, and I also have a son, he's 10 months. So I'm going to try to help them with all my advice and experience that I received being a player here with the Maple Leafs and through my career. So, but it will be at that level, grassroots level, more likely. Sam, final question. Joe, I'm here with Stuart, and he has a question about a very, very memorable moment in Leafs history for Boria. Hi, Boria. Congratulations again on your statue. Um, I wanted to ask you, when you played your thousandth game, Harold Ballard at the time did a special thing. He brought your family over, and it was quite a celebration at Center Ice. Can you tell me about that evening? I, okay. the, the night uh, your family came over, uh, the, the, uh, the, the ovation that you got at, uh, at the All-Star All game, was it? Thousand. Oh, the 1,000th game. Yeah. 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 Your 1,000th okay. game. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? For me? What was... What was your family over for the 1,000th game that you had, the ovation that you got. The other, the other ovation, of course, is what we saw at, uh, uh, during uh, when you were playing for Sweden and you were a uh, thunderous ovation at the gardens yeah. uh, with you on the ice by yourself, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, almost. But, but uh, when I played the 1,000th game, that it was uh, fantastic though, because I had no clue at all that my family was coming over to Sweden. And, uh, 
And Harold Bell came out and uh, swinging a pair of keys, and uh, a car came in, and I said, wow, Jesus, he's going to give me a car for 1,000 games, great. <laughs> but I didn't know, like, when I, the car came up and right in front of the red uh, carpet, my, my whole family stepped out of the car, so I, I almost sort of fainted because I had been there three days, and I didn't know, know they were, were there. So that was, uh, that was pretty fun. Ladies and gentlemen, three greats, two immortalized outside with their statues today. Ty, thank you very much for joining us. Matt Sundin, Boris Salming, ladies and gentlemen.